Newton tries to do something no one had tried to do before again and again. Example, the derivation of the speed of sound through air from a model of air as made up of a vast array of tiny particles each repelling each other with a force that varies as one over the distance. We know that's what air is like, Newton says, because of Boyle's law. So Newton sets out in a series of propositions to derive the speed of sound from what vibrations in such a fluid must be like. And in successive versions of that theory, he, on the one hand, has to deal with changing estimates of the speed of sound in a series of experiments by men such as William Derham, using the difference between um, the noise and the sight of a distant cannon. Right? Um, and those numbers change secularly. So Newton feels that it's necessary to change the parameters of his air model to, so that the derivation of the speed matches as perfectly as you possibly can the, the numbers that Derham and others are producing. Now that's not a cosmological question, that's a technical part of the theory. The physics isn't changing much. The physics is um, you can derive the speed of a uh, signal moving through such a medium from the dynamics of the medium. That's the claim. But what's being altered is whether, for example, the size of air particles affects this, exactly how the forces between them work, and so on. So the status of the theory is becoming robotic, autonomous. It's a prediction machine with a set of parameters which can be altered unless and until the empirical observation and the theoretical prediction correspond precisely, and as one must emphasize, far beyond what in the 21st century we would now judge to be tolerable experimental error. So it seems to me two aspects of that notion of theory are in play there. One is theories can be perfect. That's to say Newton has the most remarkable ambition. I mean, really un both unprecedented, but also, uh, I mean, not only is it unprecedented ambition, there's a sense in which it's an ambition almost no one has emulated since in, in a very strange way, because of his theology, I would say. Um, theories can be perfect. And, secondly, they therefore must be continually perfected, to use the 18th century term. That is to say, one must work endlessly to complete them. And one will never know that they have in fact been completed. So, I think what's hard to make sense of is the combination of what in our eyes might be extreme dogmatism with extreme provisionalism. Extreme dogmatism in the sense that a perfect theory is available and extreme provisionalism in that you have to keep on working to get one um, and closure is not available yet. So an asymptotic model of theoretical success, um, which I think is very characteristic of Newton's own attitude and not, I have to say, of many of his disciples certainly not his, many of his British disciples, who either believe that the theory has been perfected, which is a very common British attitude to certainly the Principia in the 1700s, or that it never will be, which is a position we might want to associate with certain kinds of Humean sceptics, um, with Adam Smith, for, for example, who in the 1750s will argue in his history of astronomy that the system of the Principia is a machine, which is, it seems to me, spot on, which is designed to generate successful predictions and whose truth we cannot know and will never know.
It's just the best we've got so far. And that is not Newton's view. 